Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Red Light Sports Ramble, brought to you by the Red Light Sports Network. And I did promise Troy would be back today joining us, but he has a quick phone call he's got to take. And he will be there back to us as soon as he can. We do have a special guest tonight. We have uh, Kevin Cunningham rejoining us tonight to talk UW-Whitewater basketball. Both the men and the women's UW-Whitewater teams are in the NCAA are in the NCAA tournament. So, Kevin, if you want to hold on for a minute, I'm going to uh, call in quick as the host, and then we'll get going, okay? Sounds good. Just hold, hold tight for a minute. We'll be right in. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to tonight's episode of Red Light Sports Ramble. We get to do the introduction again because we were not on the air live. But Troy will be joining us shortly. He is occupied right now with a quick phone call. I know I did promise he would be back. But we do have Kevin joining us once again tonight to talk UW Whitewater men's and women's basketball, who are both in the NCAA tournament. How are you doing today, Kevin? Doing good. A little bit of a sore throat, but I'll power through it. How are you? Well, I'm glad you're able to join us, even with the sore throat. You know, you're uh, showing an Ironman streak right there, kind of. You know, I, I guess similar to Favre right there. You're not letting a sore throat hold you down. So with the uh, NCAA tournament for Division Three coming up, we were talking a little bit before the show that's not really – it's different than Division One and Division Two. Can you ex- explain to our viewers how it's different? Yeah, for Division III, um, on the women's side anyway, it's basically all the same. There are 64 teams that make the field. Uh, 42, I believe it is, um, coming from automatic bids as far as winning your conference, and then 22, I guess it would be, if the 42 number is correct, would be uh, at-large bids. Um, but essentially it's the same as D1 where there are four regions, 64 teams total. Um, there are four host sites. So for the women's side of things, um, because the men are hosting, the women technically couldn't. So they're on the road at Minnesota. But basically there's four host sites um, where the host sites host the first weekend of games. So the first and second weekend, um, first and second round, excuse me, are played today and tomorrow. And then for that region of 16, it'll go down to eight teams, and they, the NCAA decides who hosts the next batch of, of games that weekend. So it kind of sounds like you're saying to me is that Whitewater is being punished because both of its men's and women's teams are doing really well in the both in the in the NCAA tournament. Is that kind of what you're saying? Pretty much. Because one could host uh, and the other can't because the ones the men's team's hosting. Yeah, to get a little complicated, but not too much. As long as, well, to go back to the men's side of things, there's 62 teams instead of 64 that make it, so there's two teams that get first-round buys, technically. Um, and if your men's team gets one of those buys, then both the men and women can host. Otherwise, as long as the men or women host, um, the other team can't make it. So, yeah, like oh, us this okay. year, because the men didn't get a host bid or didn't get a buy, they are hosting in the first two rounds, um, which start today. Um, the women had to go on the road. Okay. Now, who who are the men opening up with, and uh, when is their first game? Their first game takes place in three hours. It's here at home. Um, we're playing Northwestern St. Paul, who is 16-11 overall, um, which for I haven't looked through you know every single team in the bracket so far, but 16-11 for – you know, an NCAA tournament team in D3 especially is kind of rare. Um, usually you see teams with single-digit losses. But they won their conference tournament. Um, I think this is like the fourth NCAA tournament they've made in like seven years, something like that. Two years ago, one UW-Whitewater men's team won the national tournament. They also played Northwestern St. Paul in the first round. And I don't remember the exact score, but I think we won by you know comfortable margin, definitely double digits. Um so this is basically a repeat of the game two years ago. They come in 16-11, oh. we enter 23-4. and So it might be deja vu all over again, as uh, Yogi Berra would say. Um, you said uh, Northwestern St. Paul? Yeah, which is okay, located so I'm in assuming Minnesota. they're out of Minneapolis. 
Um, yeah. How are the um, like how are the uh, the coaches and the players? How are they? Uh, you know, what's their mindset coming into the game? And I know last time we talked, the head coach was out due to a uh, back surgery. Is he back now too? Yeah, he Pat Miller. Um, he had successful back surgery. I want to say around a month ago. Now he's back. He took you know a few games off. I think it was three that the assistant coach Nick Bennett took over and went three and zero, beating Stevens Point, the number one team in the country, um, heading into the NCAA tournament, and that's still their only loss so far to this point um, in the season. But so I mean. You know, the WEAC tournament was huge. We had to go to Stevens Point for the final, and we kind of got blitzed there. We lost by, I want to say, 18, 17. It was, you know, at, at the end of the first half, we were down um, 22, I want to say. So, you know, that game wasn't too close. But aside from that, I mean, entering 23-4, and four, we are hosting the first two rounds of the tournament. Um, you know, I, I would want to say that, the guys feel fairly well about where they are at this point in the season. Um, Coach Miller talked to one of my writers who wrote an article in the Royal Purple this past week, um, kind of, you know, saying that basically the team is happy where they are. Um, obviously they wanted to come out and beat Stevens Point in the WEAC final, but they got in that large bid. We were ranked number two in the country hanging or heading into that game. So, you know, two of the top teams in the country battling out for a conference title to lose out to that is disappointing, but definitely got the at-large bid. And like I said, hosting the first two rounds, can't really complain. Yeah, you can't complain too much about that, and I'm sure your student section there is going to be rocking uh, the first two games. Now, you guys have played Stevens Point uh, three times now, correct, or just two? Yeah, three. Okay, so three times. And right now, they're up on you right now, two to one. Now, what like, what round would you guys meet Stevens Point in the NCAA tournament, or are, could you meet Stevens Point? Yeah. Um, D3, to keep this as simple as possible, D3, because of money um, and, you know, just the amount of support that D3 gets, obviously not as much as D1, so the NCAA tries to keep teams as geographically close as possible to fly teams out at least the first couple rounds. Um, so you get a lot of Midwest teams facing off against each other, you know, at least in the early stages. Um, you know, we play the team from Minnesota in the first round. And then in our little group of four, there's another team from Minnesota, St. Thomas, as well as a team from Illinois, Augustana. Um, but, yeah, we can meet Stevens Point in the Elite Eight. That's, there are no technical seeds as far as the D3 tournament is concerned. It just, you know, goes through round by round and then, you know, the NCAA decides who hosts, um, like I mentioned earlier. But Stevens points the top-ranked team heading in, um, and we appear to be second. So, okay. so basically the they want to – I'm sorry, I say they want to keep traveling uh, very – to minimal early on, it sounds like, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying the Elite Eight will look like you guys are meet again? Yeah, that's – that's the possibility. As far as other top-ranked teams, um, in the second round we can play St. Thomas, who is, I think, coming in 16th or 18th nationally. That you know should be a good game. That game starts in less than an hour, which I'll be headed out to to check them out before the Whitewater game. Um, and basically the first round of games are all today. The second round, for the men anyway, um, are tomorrow. Okay, now you said the Whitewater game is later on tonight? Yep. Okay, now if somebody wants to listen or watch the Whitewater game, and I, I had a question on Twitter, I saw a question on Twitter last week that somebody was wondering where they could watch the Whitewater game, so I uh, tweeted it at you, and you know you, you were able to let the person know. If somebody wants to watch it or listen to the game, who can't be at Whitewater, either the early game, the one you're talking about, or the Whitewater game, um, how can they do that? Anytime throughout the D3 tournament, men's or women's, um, if you go to NCAA.com and, you know, you go through a couple of little subsections of, you know, basketball, men's basketball, women's basketball, Division III, um, and you pull up their little bracket that they have on NCAA.com, 
you can click on any of the matchups um, that pop up on the bracket, and it'll say, you know, it'll link you out to a live stats thing that basically is like GameCast on ESPN.com, or there's a Watch Live button, which sends you out to basically the host site has, you know, a TV station running um, the game on there. So that's where that sends you out to. So NCAA.com, and if you go to Division Three Men's or Women's Basketball, and then the bracket, and you can click on any game you want to watch live or basically see the game cast. Okay, and now moving on to uh, the women's really quick. They're in the NCAA tournament as well. Um, who are they playing and where? And when are they playing? They play tonight at 5.30 uh, Central Time, 6.30 Eastern. So you got another 50 minutes till that starts. They play Concordia Moorhead, who's a team from Minnesota. They enter 21-5. and DW Whitewater's 22-4. and um, that's, The game is in Minnesota. They're, like I said before, because the men are hosting, the women couldn't host. So the NCAA tried to get us to play – um, as close to home as possible. So basically headed to St. Paul, Minnesota, which is where St. Thomas um, is located, and that's the hosting team for this weekend on the women's side of things. St. Thomas coming into the tournament is playing in the top 20, um, as well as us. So, you know, it could be a battle between two top 20 ranked teams in the second round. Um, as far as, you know, looking ahead, I like our chances for both the men to move on this weekend as well as the women. Okay. And now if somebody wants to listen to or watch the uh, women's game, is it kind of the same deal as what you said about the men's? Same exact thing. NCAA.com. Then you scroll through division three and you go to women's basketball, then click on the bracket and it shows you the entire bracket. You just click on the matchup and it'll show either watch live or click on live stats. Okay, and while you were talking, uh, Troy rejoined us, um, so his call out must be be over. And just to update Troy, where we're at, we just uh, gave a quick talk about uh, the diff- you know, how the NCAA Division Three tournament is different than Division One and Division Two, and also previewed uh, the game both Whitewater men and women have coming up uh, tonight, actually, and then how they can in fact listen to the game if they if they can't be either in Minnesota for the women's game or in Whitewater for the men's. So, and uh, then talked about when Whitewater and Stevens Point could possibly meet again. So that's where we're at right now, Troy. If you have anything else, anything you want to ask Kevin? No, uh, I'm just, I'm glad to be back. Sorry I put that little wrinkle in you 30 seconds before the show, guys. You know, the, the, yeah, the, the real, we had to manage. <laughs> The real job had to had to interfere once again. It's just been the way my week's been going, Evan. You know, this yeah. is a crazy week. That crazy lady striking. She's mad at me for some reason this week. But she's mad because um, you not think Kevin. <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> crazy lady. I'm, I'll, I'll be happy, Evan, when we actually get a real show. So again, I'll plug it. We need a real show. People out there listening, Evan and I need a real talk show. But, uh, Kevin, thanks for coming on. We always enjoy having you on. Um, the, loyal list, the loyal listeners know why I love it so much, um, because it's where I spent four and a half years of my life following Whitewater Athletics. I'm an a, a alumni, a soccer player from there. So um, Whitewater is near and dear to my heart. So when we look at this tournament, Kevin, what are the things that Whitewater – and let's – We'll do both, men and women, but first let's, let's focus on the men. What are going to be the keys for them to go deep in this tournament? What are the things that they have to do to keep moving forward while they're playing? I, I think a big part of it, I mean, definitely for, for this uh, first two, uh, two rounds of the NCAA tournament, you know, is being at home, they're going to be comfortable, um, and just, you know, playing defense. Um, shooting the ball well. I mean, anything a traditional basketball team needs to do, that's what they need to do. Outside of Stevens Point, we're, I would like to say, we're the best team in our little group of 16. So, you know, until we meet Stevens Point, as long as we play our game at home, um, you know, we we should be able to come out on top. If if there is an Achilles heel, it's 
you know, that our guy that plays the four position is a little undersized. But because of that, you know, he leads the team in points and rebounds, K.J. Evans. Um, so he has mismatch, mismatches, you know, basically every single game. Um, as long as we play our game, we should be fine up until meeting Stevens Point where, you know, another juggernaut battle should uh, take place. Yeah, that'll be that'll be a good one. And then flip it on over. You know, the women's team very much success this year too. Maybe sometimes under, you know, overshadowed uh, by the men and the success they're having. But they're having one heck of a year too. What are the keys for the women? What do they have to do to advance in the tournament? Yeah, I a lot like the men's team. Um, they're a little undersized. They got a player from the volleyball team who came over halfway through the year who's definitely helped them out. Um, but I, I think that playing their game, again, I mean, what the women do better than almost any women's team I've seen um, during my time at Whitewater as far as covering the team or, you know, the NCAA tournament last year um, was that they get out and pressure other teams. And that's what Coach Carollo told me um, in an interview this past week is that, you know, they like to pressure the ball. And she doesn't think that most teams see the kind of pressure that Whitewater puts on um, other girls' teams throughout the year. So I think that, you know, as long as the pressure can be there um, and they don't get dominated on the glass, which is something that could be shown this first uh, this first matchup tonight against Concordia Moorhead, um, they should be fine. But Concordia Moorhead, you know, out-rebounds the team, opposing teams by 10 boards a game. Um, so if Whitewater, you know, and keep it close on the glass, they, they should be fine. Now, um, you know, looking, you know, obviously with, from the WEAC conference and the men, you got Whitewater and Stevens Point. Uh, are those the only WEAC teams for the men in the uh, NCAA tournament? Yeah, those are the only two, and they can be okay. meeting in the Elite Eight. Okay, and is there any other WEAC teams in the uh, women's bracket besides Whitewater? Yeah, UW Oshkosh. The Whitewater um, came into the WEAC tournament as the number one seed going 16-0 and during the regular season. Um, and in the semifinals, they had a first-round bye of the tournament. And in the semifinals, they played UW Superior and lost by, I want to say it was close to 20 points. Um, so that, was, that was definitely an upset. So the WEAC tournament did... You know, the automatic bid went to the conference tournament winner, which was Oshkosh. Um, and they're in our group of basically eight, if you want to call it. So we could meet them in the Sweet 16. Oshkosh is hosting these first two rounds um, right above us. Okay. Yeah, I should have known Oshkosh was in there because the uh, head coach at Oshkosh has a, a UW Parkside connection, being he was the assistant coach at uh at Parkside for a number of years, and Brad Fisher is now doing wonderful work at Oshkosh. But uh, hopefully, if you guys meet in the Sweet 16, hopefully you uh, you cut his season short. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be nice. We beat him that'd, twice earlier this year, so that'd be really nice. Because when because when I was at so let me let me I know Stevens Point's the big rival, but. Um, when I soccer, it was Whitewater and Oshkosh. So, you know, whenever ever you bring up UW Oshkosh, that literally makes the, the hair on my arms stand up because that was my big rival when I was at Whitewater for soccer. So um, even though my brother went there, I think he did it out of spite. But let's get back to basketball. Kevin, you, you know, we're talking Whitewater. We're, you know, what, what Whitewater needs to do. But when you look at the field of – of the tournament you know we always you know everybody does their brackets for division one and they, they talk about the sleeper teams and the underdogs when you look at it you know from your position as, as the sports editor of the royal purple is there a team in the bracket that scares you that you think might give the warhawks a run in these first two rounds start with the men um I, I would have to say St. Thomas, which would be our second-round opponent. Um, the first round could be interesting, I guess. I mean, they did win their conference tournament, so they're obviously on a high. Um, but the second-round game against St. Thomas from Minnesota, they're kind of a traditional power. Um, so, you know, even though they're 
in the back end of the top 20 as far as the rankings go heading into the tournament. Um, they're still St. Thomas history there. Um, they're going to have a good team. As far as this little section of four, St. Thomas is definitely the team on the men's side that can um, do some damage. But for the women, um, again, St. Thomas in the second round, same exact school. Um, obviously with the women, we're headed there. They're the host team. Um, so they're, you know, to go to the host team's place in the second round will obviously be a challenge. But that first-round matchup, like I said before, with Concordia Moorhead, um, they have a girl that's 6'4", 6'1", 5'10". Um, so they're big on the front line. Um, so the first-round matchup should be interesting. I, I think if we can keep that rebounding battle even, um, it'll it'll help the girls' confidence, you know, as far as the rebounding battle, which I think is their number one concern, I guess. If they do have a concern, it's down low. So if they can overcome, you know, a big team in the first round, that'll definitely build well. Now, uh, looking at it, we have about seven minutes left. Um, does, uh, Troy, do you have any other questions regarding the uh, Whitewater games for uh, today? Not necessarily the Whitewater games, just kind of the tournament in whole. I mean, you know, White, Whitewater, you know, when you look at it, they, they've had a great success, you know, but, but the tournament in the whole, um, as, a, as a whole, Kevin, and you guys may have touched on this before, um, I know Stevens Point is the big rival for the for the men, and you had mentioned that's that would be an elite eight game, which kind of sucks because that would be a great championship game. Yep. When you look at the women, you know where do you see the big the big matchup coming for the women, assuming that they keep advancing? When is their big game going to come? Yeah, I, like I mentioned earlier, D three kind of keeps teams as geographically close as possible um, to at least start the tournament. And so most of the Midwest powers are in the same region of 16, um, which doesn't bode well for the women because just to list off teams that they can play in their group of 16, um, Wash U is ranked in the top 10. Oshkosh is ranked in the top 15. St. Thomas is in the top 20, which we can play in the second round. Um, other teams we can face in the Elite Eight, Carthage is ranked in the top ten. Hope is ranked in the top five. They're undefeated so far this year. DePaul is the team that the women played in the national title game last year. They lost one game this year, and last year they went undefeated. Um, and then Ohio Northern is also in the little region of 16 there as well, and they're just a traditional power. So you've got like five or six teams in the top 20 in Whitewater's little region of 16 on the women's side. So – Every round is it's going to be difficult. It sounds yeah, that way. Sounds that way. Well, thanks, thanks for informing our listeners on NCAA Division Three basketball, Kevin. You know, like every, again, everybody gets all worked up about March Madness for Division One, but for Division Three, March Madness begins tonight. So go Hawks! Got to say, go Hawks! That's my school. Absolutely. <laughs> Now let's uh, change up question a little bit because I remember you telling us when we've had you on before how you were a Tennessee Titans fan, uh, correct? Yep, you got it. Now, what are your thoughts of, because uh, there's talk that Chris Johnson, who just a few years back had a 2,000-yard season, might get released. Um, what are your thoughts on Chris Johnson and that he could get released? Yeah, I it's tough for me because I'm a fan of him. Um, and even these past couple of years where he's had down years, he still ran for you know over a thousand yards and has been a above average back, obviously compared to his salary. That doesn't you know mean he's being productive, but he is in the top half of the league in running back as far as running backs concerned. But my main thing is if they do bring him back, him and Locker can have one more year together if Locker can stay healthy. And if it doesn't work out, that's fine. Let CJ walk. If Locker can't stay healthy, you don't see him as the future at quarterback. That's fine. Let him walk and let Wizen Hunt, the new head coach, um, draft a quarterback that he thinks can, you know, lead his team, his new team for the future. So I basically want to see CJ come back and have one last crack um, before we would have to pay him, you know, big money 
again, and Locker as well. So do you think do you think Locker's the long term? I think he is if he can stay healthy. I think last year, um, I don't remember exactly what the records were, but I think we went four and two. I want to say with him, and then without, um, you know, with Fitzpatrick under center, that was kind of a disaster. So I think Locker showed strides when he was healthy last year. Um, changing offensive coordinators again kind of hinders his progress, which I kind of wasn't happy about. I was happy about the Wisconsin hiring. I wasn't happy about all the assistance they let go because now it's like this is Locker's last shot to basically prove that he can be a franchise guy, and now he's headed into his, I want to say, fourth offensive coordinator, maybe third in his, you know, four years, three years in the league. So it's just difficult for he him. Also had a lot of, he also had a lot of offensive coordinators, too, while he was in Washington, if I'm not mistaken. And, then, you know, I've always liked Jake Locker, and I think he could be a long-term answer, but he just has to stay healthy. And uh, now, are there any uh, big-name free agents you like to see the Titans uh, go out there and sign? You know, being Packer fans, you know, we, we're not used to uh, big-name free agents being signed at all. You know, Ted Thompson tends to keep the – checkbook in the pocket, but are there any big-name free agents out there that you think would be a uh, good fit on the Titans, or have you not uh, looked into it too much? Yeah, I, I have. I mean, the Titans usually are pretty close to their pocket as well. They don't like to re-sign a lot of guys. Um, they like to just draft and let them develop. Um, last year, we actually went you know, kind of crazy on the free agent trail, but this year, if we do end up cutting Chris Johnson, which it sounds like, and uh, David Stewart, the right tackle, is just he's okay, but he's just getting old. Um, we'll have at least 20 mil in the cap, so I'm assuming the team will be looking for free agents. Um, the number one thing for me is re-signing uh, the quarterback that made the Pro Bowl last year, Alteron Burner. Um, he's 25. You know, to go alongside Jason McCourty, we can have two stud corners. Um, and I forgot who the cornerback was that just signed a four-year, $32 million deal. Um, but if, you know, if it costs eight mil to have a number one corner, basically to have two number one corners on the Titans with McCourty and Werner, I think it's worth it. Um, that's, that's probably the number one thing to me is to keep the guys that have obviously produced um, with the team that drafted them. Yeah, we have about a minute left, so do you have any final words you'd like to say, Troy? No, I just wish I could have been here for the whole show. Darn real job. It's still making me mad. I, I couldn't host yesterday, now today I had to come in late. It's like the crazy lady's trying to push me off the ramble. It's crazy <laughs> stuff. Crazy. Yeah, this but, the listeners don't think I lied to them. Uh, you know, they, they probably thought you had me had me knocked off or something, so I wasn't hosting the show with you. You know, but it's it's crazy, you know. Unfortunately, I I dialed in through my work phone, and, of course, my boss had to decide to call in on the work phone, which really sucks. So that means I had to uh, hang up. But glad you could get in the studio, Evan. And, uh, again, Kevin, I I appreciate you coming on, Kevin. You know, I know you keep shooting me emails, so we'll definitely keep in touch and, as the teams advance, you know, we'll we'll give updates and, and find time to get you back on the show because it's always great to have you on the show talking sports, bud. Sounds good. Thank you guys again for having me on. No problem, bud. Yeah, we'll stay in touch. Kevin. So with that said, Evan, I know tomorrow we have the Red Light Rant. So for our listeners, we will have a show tomorrow. And Troy will try to make it for 30 minutes. Are you sure? Tomorrow. I, I, you know what? There, the only way that this wouldn't happen, and I, I need to find some wood to knock on, is if my phone dies. I can hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I knock on my head with all the concussions I had playing soccer, I might knock myself out. Then I won't be on the show tomorrow. <laughs> That's the closest thing I could find to wood, though. <laughs> well, the thing is, you're not lying. You're, you're not even. <laughs> You're not even lying about that. But I have every intention of making a full show tomorrow. We're not going to let the cat out of the bag about tomorrow's rant. For those loyal listeners, those that are new, the rant on Saturday 
is Evan and I putting together a topic and a show that yeah, it's, it's on basis, but it's one of those where we can just talk. And, and we kind of let our passion and emotions go a little bit more than we do during the week. But Saturday's show is going to be a good one tomorrow, Evan. With that said, I think it's but, good what is we talk with our hearts rather than our brains on Saturday, where Monday through Friday we talk more with our brains than we do our hearts. Oh, is that it? Wow. Did you actually just make me sound <laughs> did you just make me sound intelligent today? Yes I did. Well I think I thank you for that. That is much appreciated. I don't get many of those pats on the back, so I guess I do have some intelligence, even though what the nickname that many of that many of times I get and sometimes you get is that we're just idiots with opinions. But yeah, we do use our brains sometimes. I'll agree with you. But with that said, Bud, we'll let the listeners get back at it. It is Friday night. Thanks for listening to the Red Light Sports Ramble presented by the Red Light Sports Network. We love all of our listeners. Keep listening in. We'll keep providing you with a quality show. We'll get at, we'll get back at you tomorrow. We'll see you at the next Red Light. Enjoy your night, everyone. Light em up. Light em up. Light em up.